Arrowhead Stadium. It's the Los Angeles Raiders versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just alike. By the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. And by MCI, communications for the next 100 years. the Chiefs in their three and one start. Arrowhead Stadium is sold out. 78,000 are here as the Chiefs go against the Los Angeles Raiders. Good afternoon, everyone, on a beautiful day for football in KC. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. Kansas City off to a three and one start. The arch rivals from the AFC West, the Raiders, come in today as Duran Cherry, the all pro safety for Kansas City, said it very simply to do well in our division, you have to beat the Raiders. We have to win today. And the Raiders promptly to win also at one and three, and they'll have to get another big game from Mark Wilson as they did a week ago. And so far, Mark Wilson has carried the load without Marcus Allen last week. They needed a big game from him. He comes up the AFC Player of the Week, got the ball to the wide receivers, which is something that the Los Angeles Raiders, Raiders have been trying to do. Against Kansas City today, this the defense is playing very, very well. But it is get the ball to Christensen, get the ball to the outside receivers. I don't think the Raiders can run against Kansas City, Don. Wilson's play becomes all the more important again this week because Marcus Allen will not play again. The young back from the Naval Academy, Napoleon McCallum, will start in his stead. Kansas City up to a three and one start is getting its best play yet from quarterback Todd Blackledge, part of that famed quarterback class of 83. Blackledge is coming off maybe his best game a week ago at Buffalo. And Don, I think the point that's lost on Todd Blackledge, he's got the least amount of starts of all those quarterbacks that were drafted in 1983. Uh, he is improving, improving dramatically. Uh, John Makovic made the choice to go with Blackledge because in the three previous seasons with Bill Kenny, the Chiefs were 6 and 10, 8 and 8, 6 and 10. So Blackledge is the quarterback as long as he stays healthy. Well, they've got some good people up front pass blocking for him, like Irv Eatman and Mark Addicts, two standouts in the U.S. football league, and a new acquisition at center, Rick Donnelly, who's been a standout. There are a lot of new people here for the Kansas City Chiefs on offense. How about the four linebackers? Well, 20 years ago in the NFL, professional football players came from big schools. How about these four guys? One from Penn State, and the other three kids, well, we don't know where. But they're all excellent players, Don. They can all play. They've been very aggressive in attacking this year, have the Kansas City Chiefs. They are a much improved team, and they'll have to be today. Just before the start of the game, out on the field came perhaps the most famous Raider of all, Marcus Allen, but he's in street clothes, missing this game because of the ankle injury. So Napoleon McCallum will start, and we're also told that Steve Strahan will probably start for Frank Hawkins, the other runner who has an injury. Nick Lowry ready to kick it off. Stephon Adams and Fulton Walker are back for the Raiders. A year ago when they met here at KC, Kansas City took charge early, went on to win the game 36 to 20. Raiders won the second meeting at the Coliseum. Here is Stephon Adams at his 10. He's Fumble. out with every ball, and the Chiefs think they have it, and so does the official. And so the first break of the game comes on the first play of the game if it does go to Kansas City. Let's wait for the official ruling. They got to make some kind of ruling before they go to the replay. Now they're going to stay with the Raiders. They're going to keep the ball. Bob Frederick's the referee, so we might have our replay boys going right to the spinner right away. Reel it back. Just appears that there's a helmet right on the ball. Let's give credit to Sherman Cocroft, and that ball looks loose, Don. I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind. You can see the official out there. That's the umpire. He's talking to Jack Reeder, who is the replay official up here in the booth. And as long as there is some doubt, they'll hold it up. Watch 22. Cocroft head right on the ball. Well, I'll tell you what. That, that's going to stand. That ball was loose. And yeah, he actually lost it when he hit the ground. Yep. And the turf cannot cause a fumble, so as much as the fans do, Raiders maintain possession. Pressure ruling is the ball was down by contact with the ground, and so it is Raider ball. They're the stop, but they go now first and ten. Here's Mark Wilson, Napoleon McCallum, and the Kansas City linebacker, led by Lewis Cooper, number 55, are there to make the knockdown for a loss of a couple of yards on the play back to the 25-yard line. 
Raiders start Mark Wilson at quarterback coming off a 314 yard game a week ago in the win over San Diego. The running backs to start are Steve Strahan, a 215 pound back, good blocker from Boston College. And in the backfield with him, Napoleon McCallum. Wide receivers coming out to the near side is the rookie sprinter from Arizona, Rod Barkstead. Wide out to the far side coming off a career day a week ago is Doki Williams. McCallum takes on a linebacker and he hits out to the 28 yard line. Chiefs don't give much. Big Art still, number 67, left defensive end, got him first. And so it's third and long now. Art still, Bill Maz and Pete Koch across the front all were high number one draft choices. Koch of Cincinnati, and they waved him. Linebackers, young, you see two rookies in there, very aggressive. And the secondary, a very strong one. Maybe the strong suit of the Kansas City de defense is the very coordinated play, the in sync play of the four pass defenders back. Now it's third down and eight for the Raiders. Wilson doesn't like to, but he's got to run. Third and eight, they got one, and they've got to punt the ball. Three and out for the Raider offense. Don, the Kansas City Chiefs came with a dime in the first third down situation. At six defensive backs, a four-man rush, and one linebacker. I don't think after what they saw the Raiders do to San Diego last week, Kansas City's going to turn their the Raider receivers loose much on man-to-man -man coverage. I think they're going to be in a lot of zone, put as many defensive backs as they, as they can in the ball game and say, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us running it or throwing it to Christensen. Right now, they're going to punt it. Ray Guy is in the game, and back deep now for Kansas City is Jeff Smith, runner from Nebraska. And Bumble. Snappen, guy's not going to get it off as he's knocked down back at the 11-yard line. The field is free of penalty flags. There are none down. particularly bad snap. Harken back to the job that Ray Guy did in the last time that the Raiders were in the Super Bowl. When the Raiders win the Super Bowl, he had the best play of the day in catching a bad snap. That was certainly good enough snap for Ray Guy, as good an athlete as he is, to make the punt. Concentration a little off so far for the Raiders to begin the game. Looked like he took his eye off the ball. And now Kansas City's first offensive possession starts at the 11-yard line of the Raiders, the 12-yard line. Back legs at quarterback. Boyce Green takes it down for maybe a yard as Howie Long led the charge defensively for the Raiders. That'll bring up second down and about nine. Nine for the first down, second down and 11 for a touchdown. Black Ledge, the starting QB. Boyce Green is in as a runner in place of injured Herman Hurd. Mike Pruitt still has something less. 11 years in the league, the former number one of Cleveland. Irv Eatman, the left tackle, is 295 pounds. You'll see him out of a lot, front of a lot of plays as a pulling tackle. Buddy Donnelly, Addicts, and Luce. Very good offensive line. This Kansas City team is loaded with talent. Second and ten with a hit the ball spotted. Pruitt cutting back, and he takes it down close to the eight-yard line. There it will be third down and about seven to go for the first down. Bill Pickell, the nose tackle, made the stop for the Raiders. Long, Pickell, and Sean Jones across the defensive front. Jones is really coming out at right end. The linebackers, Robinson, Millen, McKenzie, and Martin. And the secondary with Hayes and Haynes at the corners, Turan and McElroy. McElroy, the leading tackler at the speed. Kansas City's first possession, he got the ball when Ray Guy fumbled the snap on a punt attempt. Now from the shotgun. Third down. Seven for the first down. Nine for the touchdown. It's going to go down to Boyce Green at the two-yard line. He's very close to a first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. Jeff Barnes in, made the play, but he made it eight yards downfield. Close enough for a measurement from behind the offense. A crossing pattern by Boyce Green. There you can see him. And he just outruns Barnes. It. But Barnes makes an excellent tackle to keep him out of the end zone. Although I do think he got enough for the first down. This is this is a situation where Kansas City 3-1 and one this year was 3-1 and one last year. Then proceeded to lose seven games in a row. A lift here, a score here is a tremendous psychological lift for this young football team against an opponent that they've only won one out of the last eight games. 
If you join us late, Raiders had the ball, got nowhere on their first three downs. What seemed to be a good snap to Ray Guy, and the punt attempt was bobbled by him. He recovered the ball, but back at his 12-yard line, and that's where the Kansas City Chiefs got their first possession. First and 10 at the Raider 12. Now on third down, they hit the throw that gets them four new downs, and so they go from pretty much point-blank range. First and goal, Kansas City inside the two-yard line of the Raiders. Raiders and they throw him back. He didn't get in. He got down close to the one yard line. Van McElroy led the tacklers. And the most important thing for the Kansas City Chiefs right now is make sure of clean handoffs. Simply hang on to the football. You take your chances that you're going to get four downs. With four downs, you're going to get it in the end zone. So the Chiefs come out now again in a power formation. I said King, a fullback from Purdue, is in there. 220 pound back along with Pruitt. Walled down with tight end, wouldn't leave the blocking penalty markers down. Would be against Kansas City as Pruitt did take it in the end zone, but it might not go. Looked like the right offensive side of offensive. Ball line. start. Yep. Number 75 on the offense. Penalty and down will be required. Irv Eatman, that huge tackle. Eatman regarded as perhaps the best offensive lineman in the U.S. Football League. Would have been a high number one in the NFL had he not gone to the U.S. Football League first, and so would Attucks, the right guard, have been a high number one. Interesting, though. Eatman played defensive end in college at UCLA, offensive right tackle in the U.S. Football League. I'm making the transition to offensive left tackle for the Chiefs. It is second down and goal for Kansas City. Scoreless game. Ball at the seven-yard line of the Raiders. Stephon Page was knocked down, and there's no call against Lester Hayes. Stephon Page has made some spectacular plays this season, averaging 22 yards a catch through the first three games, four games, when he caught 12 balls, including a touchdown reception, the most spectacular play of the Kansas City season a week ago at Buffalo. And I don't know if there's a better receiver at making the last-minute adjustments to catch the football in the game. Page almost gets this one, and it did appear that there was contact, and Hayes was not looking back, but no flag. They try now. They'll have to try the field goal if they don't get it in here. Third down and goal from the seven for Kansas City. Looks by Robinson, picked up. Oh, can't get it at the end of the end zone. Walt Arnold, the tight end, diving as you see. It skips off his hands. And so the Chiefs, who got their first possession, first and ten at the Raider 12, do not get into the end zone, but they have a sure shot coming out now. A man who in seven NFL seasons, Nick Lowry, has never missed a field goal attempt inside 30 yards. Double coverage here on the tight end. You can see the two Raider defensive backs. Toran there to knock it away and a missed opportunity already for Kansas City. Nick Lowry comes in having hit six of seven field goals this season. This will be a 25-yard attempt. The backup quarterback, Bill Kenny, holding score yet. Lowry puts the first points up. And so Kansas City gets a big break early. Can't get it in, but they do get three. And the Chiefs will kick it off with a 3-0 lead when we come back. This is Don Cricky back at Sold Out Arrowhead Stadium where number eight, Nick Lowry, has just put the Chiefs on the board with a 25-yard field goal. Now ready to return a kickoff for a second time early in this game are the two return men for the Raiders. Back deep for Stephon Adams and Fulton Walker. Big chance though, Trump, for the Chiefs. They only got three out of it, starting with a first and ten at the Raider 12. Big lift for the Raider defense. It kept them out of the end zone. A lot of them a first down, and then the young team in Kansas City has to be considered a young offensive team. That penalty really killed them. It was a first and ten at the 12. It was first and goal inside the two when they got the first down. Now the city kick is not long, and here comes Fulton Walker from the 11. Big special teams play. Coming down to make it was Greg Hill, who, although he doesn't get much time as a defensive back, already has two interceptions this season. Chiefs a much more aggressive football team this year. Their defense, rather than look and read, is attacking, particularly keyed around the 
play of those two young linebackers, Dino Hackett and Tim Cofield. The only thing is, though, you can't fall in love with that defense. And against someone like the Raiders without Marcus Allen, I'm going to watch very closely, see how much zone Kansas City runs. McCallum is the eye back. He had 57 yards and 14 carries a week ago. His first heavy work in the NFL, and here he goes. On the 22, he might have gotten to the 23, but no more. It'll be second down and nine as Cofield, a blitzing linebacker, rookie free agent, made the stop. He's number 54. Last year, the Kansas City linebackers, as a team, through 16 games, had a total of three sacks. Through the first four games this year, Cofield alone has three and a half sacks. Walt Corey, new defensive coordinator, done an excellent job of teaching that sick'em defense, as they call it here in Kansas City. Temperature about 60 in KC. Coming over cap, looks like the rain will hold off. Here is a throw and a hit to Doki Williams. And he is ahead for a Raider first down out to the 34-yard line. A week ago, Wilson hit Doki Williams for 143 yards worth. It was a career day for Doki Williams, who caught eight. One for a TD. Kansas City that time came with the zone. Now quarterbacks look for the back side of the zone. In that particular instance, the linebacker didn't get out underneath Doki Williams. That's why Wilson was able to find it. But I like Kansas City's thinking here. Stay with the zone. Prove to us that you can run it. And then we'll go to something else. Very good corners on KC and Albert Lewis and Kevin Ross. It is first down and 10 for the Raiders. McCallum picked up in the backfield. Dino Hackett. Wow. A second round draft choice from Appalachian State. A very intense, aggressive player. Shot the gap and he guessed right. Because he got McCallum right with the hole and he was going to. Gain of just a yard. So it's second down and nine for the Raiders. Raiders might have a one and three record. But the three teams they've lost to through the first four weeks of play. Denver, Washington, and the Giants have a combined record of 11 and 1. Theirs has not been an easy road early in this season. Free ball up for grabs. He's got it. Hack it. Ball will be down at the 34 yard line. Still no signal from the official. No signal. They're going to have a confab again. We, this is our second of the game. And again with good reason because we might have to watch this a few more times. Mr. Edmondson and Mr. Cross in the truck, if you will. Kind of the Raiders have had a problem. It's the number of fumbles they've, they've had and then lost. The two today, the Raiders have now had 11 fumbles. There was a fumble. Ten of them. Kansas City recovered. And the ball was filled. It'll be first and 10 for Kansas City. So for the Raiders, two possessions and two bots played. That was just a misconnection between most by the center and Wilson, the quarterback, and the Chiefs get their second possession deep in the Raider end at the 20 at the 34 yard line. And you see what those linebackers were doing. They faked the drop and attacked the line of scrimmage. Both 97 Radisic and Hackett 56. Someone else made the hit, all propped up. And once again, Kansas City with outstanding, unbelievable field position. First time, though, they couldn't get anything more than a field goal, even though at one point they had a first and goal inside the Raider, too. It's a 3 nothing game, Kansas City. Well, a close screen. Former Cleveland Brown weaves his way for about three yards, down to close to the 31-yard line, where Howie Long and Matt Millen got him. Long is a guy that on every offensive play you have to account for. You see Attic 61-72 loots. Double teaming on Howie Long. Long fights off and still makes the tackle with Matt Millen making the first contact. Don, I would suggest to Kansas City try to get it down in the end zone from here. You got to be able to use the speed of these wide receivers, and this is the spot to do it. Now let's see. They have two stacked to the left. Deep speed and Carlos Carson to Pompey. Black there. Raider 40 timing counter to Boyce Green, and it's a beautiful defensive breakup. Stacy Turan, a strong safety, came across. Ball was right there to Boyce Green, and then Turan recovered, and it comes as a long out now. It'll be third down and eight for the Chiefs at the Raider 32 yard line. They had Reggie McKenzie in coverage on Boyce Green, which is a matchup that they'd, they'd like to have all day long. Stacy Turan doing his job, though, playing the center fielder. He helps out and knocks away the pass. An early look at the scoreboard. Not too much happening. Save those early field goals. 
This game is a 3 0 game for Kansas City. Third and eight for the Chiefs. Over the middle they go, and coming down with the ball is Jeff Smith, a quick, elusive back from Nebraska. Out of the backfield and ahead for a Kansas City first down to the 18-yard line. Now, and it's an interesting matchup now. What the Chiefs are getting is linebacker coverage on their running backs. You see Barnes 56 covering Jeff Smith with man-to-man -man coverage outside. You're going to have to have those linebackers covering running backs all day. Look at the attention that they paid to Howie Long. Two guys on him, three guys on him. How long plays, gentlemen? He did. He had three people blocking him. The abilities of Howie Long, but it's a first down Chiefs. Here's Boyce Green. Threw it. Block. He took a line up and put it on the turf. And Boyce Green goes in. What a block. Six points for Green and the Chiefs, but some of those points should go to Mike Pruitt. He threw the block that opened the channel. What a block by the big fullback from Purdue. Boyce Green making his first start of the season here for the Kansas City Chiefs. Formerly of the Cleveland Browns. Did not have a carry from the line of scrimmage last year for Cleveland. Comes to Kansas City. And Herman Hurd gets hurt with a bruised thigh. Boyce Green is a quality running back. And you nailed it. Mike Pruitt had the springing block. Tremendous block by Pruitt, and it was in untouched for Boyce Green, and now the Chiefs looking for a 10 point. 556 to play in the first quarter. Raider mistakes have given Kansas City two field possessions deep in the Raider end. Extra point is up and good, and so the Kansas City Chiefs open up a 10 nothing lead on the Raiders back after the offense. The anatomy of an excellent sweep. Eatman 75 does a great job on Jones. Watch Mike Pruitt. Inside shoulder through that outside knee. Gets Mike Haynes on the ground. Green turns it up. An 18-yard run for a touchdown. That's four plays. 34 yards. And Todd Blatch Blackledge knows when a job is well done. Yeah. We'll take it. Easy money early for the Chiefs as the Raider mistakes have set them up. And now Kansas City with a 10-0 lead is ready to kick off for a third time in the first quarter. They open the game with a kickoff. Stephon Adams and Fulton Walker back to try again for the Raiders. Walker will go from the six. Another ball on the field. Now really the play is down. It's the Raiders ball. But Don, many times we've talked in the initial stages of a football game that the special teams establish a motion. The Chiefs have charged up. I mean really fired up for the Raiders today. You can see the contact. Cocroft in there. Cofield in there. He's up. His progress is stopped and there. Therefore, you can see number 83, the side judge, waving his hands in the play. The Raiders are really struggling here. Coach Flores puzzled by it all as the Raiders now try again. They go to the run. This is Strahan trying to go to the outside, and Hackett gets him at the 21-yard line. He didn't get a thing. Dino Hackett stretched him out, and Strahan is knocked down for no gain. It'll be second down and 10. Strong safety. Mark Robinson did an excellent job there, too. Made Strahan jump to the outside. He made first contact. Hackett there to clean up. The Raiders are trying to run on first down. That's when the Chiefs are attacking the line of scrimmage. Now, second down and long. I would expect zone coverage once again. Raiders start is reminiscent of a year ago when the Chiefs got him up. Big point for to beat the Raiders 36-20 and now a throw and a completion to McCallum and Napoleon McCallum who set an NCAA record for all-purpose yardage at the Naval Academy gets it out to the 35-yard line it's a Raider first down at McCallum's first catch as a Raider suffering from a slightly pulled hamstring and probably has to go through more to be here on a Sunday afternoon than any man in the history of the game we have his schedule daily we'll put up for you later but Ensign McCallum puts a lot of hours in with the Navy and the NFL. What's the name of that ship now? You know that ship well. The Peleliu. The Peleliu. 3,000 men aboard that Peleliu. Actually, 
One less today. Here now is Grahan on a first down carry. He gets to about the 38 yard line of Los Angeles. Radasek, a big tough inside linebacker from Penn State, made the strike for Kansas City as the game clock's down to 407 and running in the first quarter. And the Chiefs are out in front 10 to nothing. On this Chief defense under Walt Corey, doing a lot of change in here. In two successive downs, it doesn't appear they've done the same thing. They attack the line of scrimmage, they're back in zone. They got six defensive backs, they go man to man. They're not giving Mark Wilson a steady look at any snap. Dropping the throw now on second and six is Wilson. He's not going to get anywhere. Sacked at the 34 yard line. Pete Koch got him. And Moss was also on the play. Koch, number 74, was a high first round draft choice of the Cincinnati Bengals. They didn't think he could play, didn't want to play the big contract. They waived him, and Kansas City got him. He stood out this season. 74 of the Chiefs on 79 of the Raiders. That's Davis. Not just beats him inside. Now the Chiefs come with their six defensive backs, Don. They're doing an excellent job of changing up here. Watch Mark Wilson look around, trying to identify who, in fact, is in the game. Raiders deploy great speed to either flank, and Boxdale and Williams are going deep. That's Williams. There's a throw to McCallum, and the ball is stripped from him. Mark Robinson, a strong safety, came up and freed the ball. And so the Raiders don't get there again, and Kansas City will get the ball for a third time in the first quarter, leading 10-0. We'll see here what Wilson has to look at. Count the defensive backs. Three deep, two on the outside, one on this side. Zone all over the field. Now what that does for the receivers, they know they're going to pay a price when they catch the ball. Makes them think about it a little bit. You see Robinson coming up there just you read the quarterback's eyes doing a great job here so far Raiders still haven't had a first down. And the Chiefs with their two early possessions deep in the Raider right end have opened up a 10 nothing lead. Remember the last time Ray Guy went to punt. Imminent disaster when he fumbled the snap. Almost blocked. Ray Guy had to make some quick move to get that away. And coming up is Jeff Smith with an acrobatic Signal fair catch at the 33-yard line. Albert Lewis almost blocked that punt. Watch this. Guy sees he's got to really hurry and just gets it up over Albert Lewis. It's 10-0. The Chiefs up on the Raiders in a shocking opening in the first quarter. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy. Trump, the Raiders came in with a very carefully crafted offensive game plan. What does this early development do to it? Hurts a lot. Uh, now they're going to have to start throwing the ball to McCallum, to the running backs, because I do believe Kansas City is going to be coming with a lot of six defensive back sets. And have been fairly on the side of the Kansas City Chiefs. Blackledge looking deep on first down. There's a penalty marker on Stacy Turan. He bumped the tight end, Walt Arnold, at the 49-yard line of the Raiders. A defensive penalty on the Raiders gives the Chiefs a first down on the Raiders side. Here's Frederick. Defensive pass interference, number 30. First down. When we have a moment. We'll take a look at how the scoreboard reads. New England out to an early 10-0 lead on Miami. Dolphins giving up points at over a 35 per game average. Cleveland leading Pittsburgh. Browns have never won, have they, at Three Rivers State? Never, never. They're over Three Rivers. Over the 70s and now into the 80s. Green Bay needing a win very badly up on Cincinnati. Right now, with the Chiefs up on the Raiders, 10-0, it's a first down for Kansas City. Black legs, big and mobile. Good block springs him, and he gets inside the 45-yard line. Blackledge is 6'3", 225 pounds, has never been injured. Run and throw. He was the second quarterback selected in that 83 draft. After Elway went to the Colts and subsequently to the Denver Broncos, Kansas City on the seventh pick of the first round took Todd Blackledge. Just his 19th start of his career in the NFL today. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. And down in six coming up. We see the number start the others in the class of 83 there. Black Club's just starting to come of age, and Floyd Green takes it over the top, and he appears to have enough for a first down. That's about him at the 39-yard line of the Raiders. He got what he needed by a foot. Donnelly firing out from the center position, moving people out. He's small, 
from a height standpoint, 6'2", but very strong. Rick Donnelly won the NFL's strongest man competition. He moves people around in there. They have the first down. They're going to measure, but they have it. So far, Don, Kansas City pretty much having their way with this defense. Nothing has really been stopped. This has been the problem, and I think we'll continue to be the problem for the Raiders. Their defense is on the field so much without Marcus Allen. They don't seem to be able to come up with a long, sustained drive. They did last week against San Diego in the latter stages of the football game to win, but that guy is 80% of their rushing and has, over the last five years, been 46% of their offense. For the second week, because of the injured ankle, he can only look on. Now the Chiefs rising again with a 10-0 first quarter lead. Henry Marshall's going deep. Throwing a strike. Down with the ball is the former Green Bay Packer All-Pro, Paul Kaufman at tight end. Picked up as a waiver player. He's got it down to the 31-yard line on first down. It'll bring up second down at about one. Oh, two. Reggie McKenzie, an inside linebacker, knocked down Kaufman. One of the big matchups we have today is Irv Eatman, the offensive left tackle of the Chiefs, versus Sean Jones, who has emerged as a real quality player. That's a new change in the, in the NFL. You see Eatman putting his arms out straight. Well, that, that's a lot of beef right there. There are penalty markers down all over now on a second down and two play. If Eatman can hold Sean Jones out, he is good. Sean Jones is coming Ball from like start. midnight flyer. 61 on the offense. Down will be replayed. That's Mark Addicts, offensive right guard. Continue on Eatman. He, he has an inside stance. That is, he plays left tackle and his right hand is down. His right foot is back. He was an offensive right tackle in the U.S. Football League. Carl Mock, the offensive line coach, said, all I want him to do is get out there and play now. And this offseason, we will teach him how to play offensive left tackle. Number 75, Irv Eaton. Let's see what Blackledge goes to now on a second down and eight. Boyce Green and Mike Pruitt are in his backfield. Pruitt. He's got it. He hits inside the 30. They're going to knock him down at the, just inside the 29-yard line. It appears he does have a first down. 228 pounds, and he can accelerate. Right behind Addicts and Lutz, the offensive right side of the Chiefs. They get a good push here. They're going to fold Piquel. That's an excellent job. You see Donnelly almost single-handedly taking care of Howie Long. Boy, you go back to the huddle, and you block two guys like that. Push him out for almost a first down or first down. And I'm telling you, the, the, the adrenaline is pumping. You go back to the sideline and tell your coach, keep running it up there. Keep running it up there. We can handle them all day. So the mark is at the 29-yard line. Third down comes up as the carry by Pruitt was just short. So it'll be third and really less than a foot. The Kansas City Chiefs. Got three points on their first possession, even though they had it first and goal inside the Raider two at one point. That was after Ray Guy mishandled a snap on a punt attempt. He started at first and ten at the Raider 12, first time they got the ball. Another mistake, a fumbled snap from center. He's got it a second time. They took it in that time. Boyce Green on the run. So now it stands 10-0, Kansas City. Oh, a quick trap block. Hey, that center Donnelly is a player going on for Kell, and that's not easy to move out. They bring in an extra offensive lineman, Joswiak, who is not a bad-sized guy. It's about 310. Yeah, something like that. And they just push it right at the Raider defense. Two seconds to go, and the first quarter is out. A roaring success for Kansas City as after the first 15 minutes, they hold a 10-0 lead. We'll be back to Arrowhead after this. Since they've had something to stand and cheer about at Arrowhead, first time since 79, the stadium has been sold out in time for local television. The Raiders pack the building all over the league. And right now, the Raiders are in trouble down 10 nothing as we're ready to start the second quarter. Don Cricky with Bob Trumpy, Kansas City with the ball at the Raider 26-yard line. Blackledge has not thrown an interception in 65 pass attempts this season. Got 
got away. Rod Martin, outside linebacker, closed him. And so the knockdown is made at the 32. There's a loss of a yard. It'll be second down and 11. Excellent coverage that time by the Raiders. Offense had no one to throw it to. Best choice is just take it down. Don't lose too many yards. You don't want to take yourself out of field goal range here. Game clock with 1440 to play in the first half. Raiders have had virtually no time of possession. They've been in and out. Their offensive unit, Kansas City, with Black Legs in the offensive unit driving most of this first half. Something in the Raider defense that Black Legs didn't want like, so he calls timeout for some counsel, and there's a timeout on the field, and we'll be back to Kansas City with the score. The Chiefs 10 and the Raiders nothing. Be sure to join us Saturday evening, October 18th, for the opening of the World Series. As NBC Sports proudly presents the 83rd World Series. Baseball's great moments were first televised on NBC. And our long tradition continues as the National League champions host the American League champions in game one. So be sure to tune in at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Major League Baseball, an inside look followed by the excitement and special magic of game one. The World Series is home on NBC. It's right now on NBC, the Kansas City Chiefs with a 10-0 lead over the stunned Raiders are driving again. Second down and 12 now for KC at the Raiders 28-yard line. Play. Big play indeed. Lyndon King, a waiver acquisition cut by San Diego, a big rangy linebacker, came in to make the play on voice screen. Now it's third and very long, third and about 16. Blitz by the Raiders at the right time. King coming from the outside. He's just like a pass rusher. It's voice screen down. That's surprising, isn't it? 10 nothing Kansas City, but relatively close in time. On the seven minutes the Raiders have had it, they haven't had much happen positively. Right now, from the shotgun, Blackledge gets set with two spread out receivers to the left side. Loading that side up, he's going deep. And a great break up on the play by Sam Sia, but there's a penalty marker down. Emil Henry, who was just added to the roster, was in line to catch the ball, adjusting to it in flight, and then Sam Seal came from off the play and bumped him. Defensive pass interference, number 45. First down and goal. He called 45, but it's on 43. Henry does a great job here of slowing up. What he does is he gets himself right in front of Sam Seal. And Emil Harry, when he slows up, that's when the contact is made. Good call. Point blank range again for Kansas City. He was going for the ball too, though, wasn't yeah. he? Oh, yeah, sure he was going for the ball. Who? Sam Seal. Seal. Sam Seal. That doesn't make a difference. There's contact when that ball is in the air. That's not coincidental contact if you keep the other guy from catching it. Well, the Chiefs looking to put a knockout punch out early on early on the Raiders now. Go first and goal. Fumble. Yes, it is. Let's see who's got it. Chiefs still have the ball. Ball was freed, though, on the hit into the line. Mike Pruitt ran the ball down to the one. Don, sometimes coaches outsmart themselves. Last goal line did an excellent job of running to the right. This time they try to go to the left. That's Eatman on Sean Jones. The lead block in there. By Bruce King, ball loose. And the city's able to Mike Brook picks up his own fumble. And so the ball is positioned inside the one yard line of the Raiders. Second down and goal, Kansas City. Chiefs lead in the second quarter, 10-0. Back is Jeff Smith. He gets no, they play fake. Throw and a catch and a touchdown. Kaufman. All Kaufman from nearby Kansas State. The former Green Bay Packer makes the reception for his second touchdown as a Kansas City Chief. And all of a sudden, the route is on with 12.27 to play in the first half. It's the Chiefs 16 and the Raiders nothing. Mike Haynes is still down on the field. 
They get back. I think it's McElroy that's down on the field. No, it's Mike Haynes. Paul Kaufman was open forever. He was standing back there, waving his arms to Blackledge. Todd finally found him. There's Haynes up and moving. Kaufman is also, also limping on the Kansas City Chiefs bench. Bodies all over the field. Points on the board only for the Chiefs. Jaron Cherry's team. We talked about in the opening, the all pro safety for Kansas City. He said to do well in our division, you have to beat the Raiders. We've got to win today. And right now, the Chiefs are out to a big lead. 16 nothing, looking for 17 points. With 12.27 to go in the first half, it is now 17 nothing Kansas City. The Chiefs kick it off, and we come back to Arrowhead. From behind the defense, you'll see the injury to Haynes on the right. He got chopped by Irv Eatman. Now watch Buffin when he catches the ball. He comes down on Stacy Turan's foot. His left foot turns. Sprained ankle, six points. The Chiefs making a route of it. One of Kansas City's best players, receiver Carlos Carson, will play again today. He's out with a sprained knee and ankle. Suffered early in the first quarter. Now with a 17-0 count. Kansas City on the board. The Chiefs are ready to kick it off again. The people who bought this stadium out early are happy to be here today as Kansas City gets a long kick down to the one-yard line. Here comes Fulton Walker for the Raiders. Robinson, another big play on special teams. A defensive back from Penn State. Today's game is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. By McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste. And by New York Life, to help you get the most out of life. Von Adams knocked down on a big special teams play by Mark Robinson of the Chiefs, and now the Raiders go to the pass. As they have not thrown the ball much here, that is just the fifth pass of this game by Mark Wilson. He's completed four. That one good for a gain out to the 26-yard line. Chicago finally gets a touchdown in the second quarter and goes up on the Vikings. The Cardinals still leading the Giants. Second and short for Mark Wilson Raiders looking to get their first drive of the day going. McCallum runs and runs right into a linebacker. And also into Pete Cotts, the defensive right end. Gain of only yard in the play. It'll be second down and one. Third down and one. Keep waiting for him to see the Raiders go to that deep heat. The deep man in the lineup. Elke Williams, a flyer, had the great game last week, but they've cordoned off those wide receivers when they've run the fly. That's right. They've got the double coverage on the outside guys. Wilson's got to go to the running backs. Vance Mueller is in the game. A rookie from Occidental now is a running back. Go. Fake to Strahan. Throw down field, and there's too much on it for Vance Mueller. And so on third and one, the Raiders try to Late throw play. and don't make it go. And here is a flag coming in late. I'll tell you what happened. Deron Cherry just absolutely stuffed Todd Christensen, but it was more than five yards down the field, and they threw a flag late. Deron Cherry hit him right in the chest, and watch it. Watch what happens. He Illegal gets a release. Contact. Now Number watch what happens. on the defense. Right First there. down. He was the primary wow. receiver. Good call by the officials, no doubt about it. Christensen was more than five yards down the field, but that, I think, is what Christensen's going to face all day long. Watch this. Boom. Stopped him dead in his tracks. Took the official a while to find the pocket where the flag was, but first down, Raiders. Raiders finally get a call their way now. The ball is out to the 32-yard line of Los Angeles. Raiders trail 17-0. Second quarter. Free ball. Deron Cherry seems to have it, then he lost it. It's incomplete. Everybody had a play in that yeah, one. That was a jump ball. 
Dino Hackett was after it. Deron Cherry was after it. Hester was the intended receiver. And you can see just by the drop that this is zone coverage. Now watch. He tries to go up and get it. But Radisic, 97, they're both fighting over it. This falls free. Falls free. Good second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Kenneth Edmondson. Our director, Jim Cross. We have 10 minutes and 52 seconds to play in the first half. Chiefs 17, the Raiders nothing. McCallum, a 210-pound back, working hard, gets the ball out to about the 38-yard line. Actually, McCallum's now about up to about 218. Good thing he spent the 30 days with the Raiders in training camp. There you see Christensen, the tight end, not a great blocker. All you got to do is just kind of get in some people's way at some times when you do your job. Nice pickup for McCallum, third down and about, what would you say, three down? A little over three. Raiders have not converted a third down in three previous tries. Christensen was running a deep pattern, but Wilson never had time to unload as Eric Howie, number 93, in the pass rush was in. A second sack now of Christensen, or Mark Wilson, as the ball's going to be spotted down at the 32-yard line. So it's fourth down again for the Raiders, and again, Ray Guy comes out to punt. Second sack by the Chiefs. Again, the Raiders face the four-man rush, one linebacker, and six defensive backs. No place for Wilson to go. That defense has worked in long yardage and short yardage situations today for the Chiefs. Great guy has been under the gun somewhat. The Raiders did two weeks ago bring three putters into camp to work them out. Now he hits a good one downfield after his all pro season. So many of them with the Raiders. And the upfield is Jeff Smith. Raiders special team coverage is very good. Strahan was down. So was Jeff Barnes. And so Kansas City will go on offense again. First and 10 with 9.32 to play in the first half. All-pro cornerback Mike Haynes of the Raiders, troubled by a mildly sprained ankle, he is expected back. The Chiefs have won their last five home games here at Arrowhead, the longest win streak they've had at Arrowhead in the 15-year history of the stadium. It's sold out today, 76,000 strong, and the Chiefs have put on a show aided by a Raider mistake. It's 17-0 Kansas City in the second quarter. 9.30 to play in the half. Oh, oh! Almost went in. Lester Hayes had a hand on the ball in an open track. The out pattern. Always dangerous if it hangs. Especially down there. Henry Marshall, the intended receiver. One thing about Lester Hayes. At times, he guesses. That time, he guessed right. <laughs> Look at there. Normally, five years ago, when Lester had all that gunk on his hands, that ball was stuck to it. He'd have gone in for six points. Now they're going to take Mike Haynes in and x-ray the ankle. Marcus Allen on the sidelines for a second week with a dead ankle. Right now, the Chiefs have the ball second down and 10 at their 19. Through it. Gets to the 21. Kansas City has been running the ball more this year because of the improvement in the offensive line. This offensive line doesn't run a lot of traps, but they don't mind running the double pull sweep. You see Lutz, the offside tackle, taking a shot on Stacy Turan. But an excellent job of pursuit by the Raiders. And Fruit only gets a couple of yards. A little shove by Stacy Turan, which is part of the game plan when these two teams play. Yeah, the guy at left tackle, though, for the Chiefs. Irv Eaton's caving in the Raiders' side of the line. Watch it. And up the pass block. They go to a draw, and the Raiders read and make the hit. Sean Jones came across along with the nose tackle, Bill Pickell. As the game clock is down to 8.30 to play in the first half, still 17-0 Kansas City. And they had a game on, and Sean Jones ran right into the path of the runner. Makes the tackle for no game. Last year, the Miami Dolphins gave up 342 points in the entire season. This season, the first four games, they gave up half that many. They're going to give up more, too. 
lots more. Given up 17 Bruce already today at New England. Fulton Walker is back deep now. The guy that hasn't gotten any work yet today. The Kansas City putters out for the first time. Lewis Holbert. Well hit. Fulton Walker is out to the Raider 44-yard line with 7.45 to play in half. Adam Linger was an animated play on special teams as the Chiefs and the Raiders are meeting today for the 54th time over the years. Raiders have dominated, but not today. The Chief fans in celebration today as the Chiefs have opened up a 17-0 lead on the Raiders. Down quickly with Bob Trumpy as Mark Wilson is going to have to get something going. He might start throwing right now. Open man, Doki Williams drops the ball at the 35-yard line. Williams slipped into that proverbial soft area of the zone. He yeah. was free. Usually on the perimeter of a soft area of a zone is a hard person. And in that particular instance, it was Tim Goldfield. A real hard person. Once again, Chiefs using zone coverage. Wilson got plenty of time to look around. Loki Williams just couldn't make, make the catch. Last week, he was 90% of the Raiders' offense. Second down and ten Raiders. Mueller. Mark Robinson, the strong safety, came up and got him. And it's going to bring up third down and about seven. Don, the Raiders got the blocks they wanted here. They got the corner captured. They caved in the Kansas City G defense. Watch what happens. Christensen does a decent job. Davis does a decent job. They got the corner. But Hackett catches this play from behind that's the difference between Vance Mueller carrying it and Marcus Allen carrying it. Mark Robinson on the tackle. Robinson starting for injured Lloyd Burris one of the best strong safeties in the conference. Wilson lets it go long. Intercepted. Down with the ball is Greg Hill his third interception this season. So the Raiders misfire again. Wilson trying to go deep to Vance Mueller. Still put the pressure on Mark Wilson and Greg Hill came down with the ball for Kansas City. And once again, I like Kansas City, the fact that Kansas City has not fallen in love with trying to sack the quarterback. They had pressure on him. The sack didn't mean anything, but they had zone coverage. Greg Hill just standing back there waiting to make the interception. Wilson says, ah, oh, no. For Wilson so far this season now, that's his sixth interception thrown through four games. Mark Wilson has two, had two 300-plus games and three started so far this season for the Raiders. Today, the whole Raider offense has been misfiring as Blackledge, big and rangy, has to move quickly and he can't outrun Howard Long. Bikel was there also. And so the Chiefs will go from long yardage on second down at back of their 30 yard line. Raiders sack first of the day. First time the Raiders came with a four man rush too. They had Greg Townsend there at the outset. You can see him across the front there. Jones, Mikel, Long. And to the outside right is Townsend. Luckily he's got no place to go but down. It's a good thing he elected that down move because those two Raiders are ready to pinch him. Quarterback sandwich. See Blackledge's numbers for the day. Not a lot of yards. Has not needed to know. The drives have started in close on two occasions. Second and 20 for Kansas City. Boy screen. Free ball. And the Raiders have it at the 37-yard line of Kansas City. Terry Robinson has the ball. Raider football is, you know it and love it out in Los Angeles. Or well, somebody it's really sheer strike power. I think Greg Townsend was the one who came from behind and absolutely leveled Boy Green when he cut back inside. Green still on the ground. We'll, we'll be able to pick this up now. See exactly who it was. There's the catch. When he cuts back inside, the defensive backs do a great job of. Can you pick up that number? 
Uh, 93 Greg Townsend. Greg Townsend came back to get it. Right on the leg. Robinson with the recovery. First turnover by the Chiefs today. Now the Raiders have good field position. Something they've not enjoyed is the game clock is down to 6.43 to play in the first half. Townsend, a fourth-year defensive end, a pass rusher by specialty out of TCU, has great takeoff and quickness. And that time he used it to recover and come back, forced the, re the turnover. First of the day committed by Kansas City. Coming up at halftime, NFL 86 previews the upcoming baseball play. Off says Bob Costas talks to the Astros' Mike Scott, the Mets' Keith Hernandez, the Angels' Wally Joyner, and Boston's Wade Boggs. Plus all the latest scores and news from around the league. So stay tuned with NFL 86 coming up at halftime. Not a comment on Mike. On Mark Wilson, there's the boy screen up and on his feet. Looks like it's not really an injury. You notice that Wilson's right thumb is taped on his throwing hand. He's had a history of thumb problems. Even on his other hand, he's banged them on some helmets. The kids play with an awful lot of injuries and an awful lot of pain over the last couple of three years for the Raiders, and I don't think he's really gotten much credit for it. He also has a possibly separated shoulder that kept him out one week. Right now, though, the Raiders need badly to get it in the end zone. They're down 17 to nothing. Dokey Williams comes out wide right. Albert Lewis, an excellent one on one cover, plays way off. Him. Wilson looks left. Now goes over the middle. Whoa. Another drop ball. This one at the 31 yard line. Rahan coming out of the backfield. Can't hold it. That was a reject. Bounce right off his shoulder pass. You can see that Wilson is looking to his outside receivers down the field. Kansas City continues. Excellent zone coverage, and the running backs are the only guys that are open for Wilson to go to. Raiders put the speed on the right flank this time. Looking to the right. Jesse Hester slotted the right. And second and ten. Wilson gets it downfield. This one's dropped by McCallum at the 25-yard line. Get some of these Raiders the Iron Glove Award today. I don't know what else he can do to him. Hit Strahan right in the chest and hit McCallum right in the chest. So the game clock's down to 6.30 to play in the first half, and it remains 17-0. The Chiefs in the lead. Now the Chiefs come in with their extra defensive backs. There's Todd Christensen. He tries to run with the quarterback the way he's going and turn up field. There's the ball right off of McCallum. Can't blame those on Mark Wilson. Dr. Strange Glove Award today. The Raiders can't hold it. Third and ten. Christensen can. Takes on people as he uh, far enough ahead for the first down and third and ten. It looks like he might be just short with his spotting the ball. They'll go for it. Down 17, nothing with 6.15 to play in the half. Ron Cherry on the tackle. First time the Chiefs came with a blitz. That meant single coverage. And Christensen beat Ron Cherry across the field. So they can quit that, go back to the zone. Fourth down a little bit. Raiders going for it, Don. For sure. Over the years, no team has come from behind like the Raiders, and there's no mystery to how they do it. They just play as hard as they can every down, and something happens. No matter how far they're down. Fourth down on the yard for the Raiders. McCallum, first down and more, as he takes it down to the 23-yard line. Needed one, and he got five. Dino Hackett knocked him down. McCallum is listed at 6'2", 215. I think that's a lie. He's more like 225. Has a big loping stride. And the offensive line that time did an excellent job of blowing out the Kansas City defense. Deron Cherry on the field. Slow getting up. The officials have stopped the clock, so that means that Cherry is going to have to leave the field for one play. Sherman Cocroft comes in. We'll have to come in and replace him. Raiders were talking about how Kansas City always has a special day plan whenever they come in. Today it is Alumni Day. Some of the Chiefs' great players are back. Fred Arbanis, Bobby Bell, Buck Buchanan, Ed Buddy, Lenny Dawson, Willie Lanier, Jim Lynch, Jerry Mays, Otis Taylor. There's always a reason to make the crowd a little bit happier when the Raiders come to town. Anything you can use. And today at halftime, Willie Lanier will get his Hall of Fame ring. What you're saying is opponents always make it homecoming when the Raiders 
show up. These two teams have put on some great football games in the last 20 years of the NFL and the AFL. 54th meeting over the year. First and 10, and McCallum shows his stuff and takes it down to the 12-yard line. He gets 12 yards and a first down for the Raiders. Now the offensive front of the Los Angeles Raiders starts to take hold as tackles Davis and Lawrence. The guards, Hannon and Marvin in the center. Most bar move them out. They do an excellent job, too. Run a little tackle trap. And you see Charlie Hannon, the guard, coming on one side. And McCallum is a good north-south runner. That is goal line to goal line. Talked about his big stride. He just rode right over Kansas City lineman. Raiders challenging for the first time in the game. They fell 17 0 in the second quarter. End zone, Williams, touchdown, Raiders. Yoki Williams is in on the payoff end of a perfectly timed throw by Mark Wilson. And so the Raiders, after their awful start, come alive now and trail in the game 17 6. They refer to this as a fade pattern. The receiver initiates the contact. And then bounces off the defensive back, and that is a perfectly thrown ball. One, whoa, I don't hit second foot wasn't down in bounds. If we rerun that, you're going to see that the second foot was not in bounds. Now, what the replay official will look oh, at. Let's see this now. This gets you going, doesn't it? Yeah, what the replay official will look at is in him, in, in his determination, this touchdown is going to count. Let's go back to the replay. Oh, my Let's goodness. Let's see if there's any contact. One, Oh, he was touched. I think the touchdown will stand, but that is a yep. that is a very very close call. And this could go either way. And there's a guy sitting down here with uh, sunglasses and a black leather jacket that if they take that touchdown away, he's going to be on the field, not him. <laughs> I'm talking about Al Davis. He will be on the field. Let's watch once again. Without the After contact review by the instant replay, the play stands as a touchdown. What the replay official is saying is that the contact by Lewis pushed Doki Williams out of bounds, so the touchdown stands. So the Raiders finally get on the board. They went over 11 quarters without a touchdown after their third quarter score at Denver in the opening before they scored last week against San Diego. Extra point is up and good. Something the press box said. Somebody just cleaned up up here. They had. In the touchdown pool, the Raiders in 1986. <laughs> Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Where the Raiders finally got on the scoreboard. A touchdown throw and a thing of beauty. Mark Wilson, a perfectly arched throw in the corner of the end zone to Doki Williams and now Chris Barr. Hit the extra point, kicks off. Neil Harry takes it back. He is blasted, coming down to make the play on special teams with James Davis. Watch this great adjustment that Doki Williams makes on this catch. Excellent concentration. The ball is right over the top of his shoulder. He makes it look easy. Wow. His second touchdown catch of the to season. Our producer, Kenneth Roy Edmondson, has just been told that that was an incomplete pass, that the Raiders were credited with a touchdown, but it came too late. The ruling and the play stands. A breakdown in communication. The Raiders should not have had the touchdown, according to what our producer has been told. Chiefs perhaps going to take their 10 point winnings to the locker room if they can't. They've got to move the ball out. There's still a substantial amount of time with four minutes to go. Don, how can there be a breakdown in communication when I heard, I saw the umpire listening to the man up in the booth? So what they're saying was that the contact by Albert Lewis on Doki Williams was not enough to force him out of the end zone. I don't understand how they can't get down to the field. I mean, there's people watching this game in New Delhi off a of satellite. Me, I, I, for the life of me, I don't. I mean, just throw a flag down on the field or a football or an ice cube or something. Well, I think Bill Granholm at the NFL office had the best suggestions. Why don't we have a phone on each side of the field? He just called down, the guy walks over and picks it up and yeah. talks to him. Good idea. Second down and eight now. The carry doesn't get much. It'll bring up third and about seven. As the game clock is down to 3.05 to play in the first half. It's 17-7 Kansas City. 
The chief beneficiaries of early possessions in the Raider end due to Raider mistakes. But then, of course, the Raiders beneficiaries of a lack of communication between the field and the replay official. in the shotgun on third down in a long six. One of his ace receivers, Carson, is out with a strained ankle and a strained knee. Throw and a catch. Nicely done. And Jeff Smith, the running back for Nebraska, is ahead to the 27-yard line for a Kansas City first down. There's that linebacker coverage on the running backs that Kansas City has utilized very well so far. That's Smith's second catch of the day. He's been a big receiver, a very timely receiver for the Chiefs to convert third downs to first downs. We'll have all the scores and the highlights of week five of NFL 86 coming up at halftime when we go to New York. Cincinnati now coming from behind on a James Brooks touchdown run to take a 13-7 lead on the Packers. 2.27 to go in the first half. First and 10, Kansas City. That's the pattern they love to run to Carlos Carson's not in there. But the ball's in the air before the cut is made. That time they went to Stefan Page, who wasn't there just when the ball came in, so it goes as an incomplete pass, and it's second down and 10. Blackledge was looking in the direction of Stefan Page and saying, it's 12 yards, it's not 14 yards, it's a 12-yard out. Looked like with the bump and run coverage of Lester Hayes, Stephon Page did run it a little deep. And now we're told they do have telephones on the field also drunk. What good do they do if they don't ring? <laughs> well, they are seeing this game off the satellite in New Delhi and everywhere else. Jakarta. Jeff Smith runs the ball hard on second down and 10. He is out to the 33-yard line. A pitch back in Jeff Smith, the hard running back from Nebraska, takes it ahead to make it third down and about five. We'll look again from the end zone. So it's not tall, but he's big. Don't think that they'll run another play before the two-minute warning, but the Chiefs offensive line is doing a great job of attacking that line of scrimmage. Good lead block out there in front by Attic 61. Two-minute warning is given. And the Chiefs will have it with a 17-7 lead when we come back. Some of our neighbors to the north from Canada here. Kansas City holding to a 17-7 lead over the L.A. Raiders. The Chiefs open up a 17-0 lead, and then the Raiders scored on a touchdown throw to Doki Williams, which we were later told should have been disallowed because Williams wasn't in. They said there was a breakdown in communication, getting word down to the field. And so before they did, the ensuing kickoff had taken place. And it's all academic now. The points are on the board for the Raiders at 17-7. Any the teenager up there, they can get in touch with anybody. He's at phone. Third down and four coming up. Long night of left early. He says he was drawn off as Pruitt gets the ball on the draw play and doesn't get much. But if it's a call against Howie Long, it'll bring a first down and a five-yard assessment. Raiders think it's against Kansas City. Howie Long is lobbying, so I think it's yes, against Howie, Howie Long. Five, offside. So far, very little has gone right for the Raiders today. Bad field position, turnovers. But their biggest play is lack of communication. It was an overcast day at the outset. Now, bright, sunshiny day. They've had tremendous rain in this area the last couple of weeks. Flooding. Perfect playing conditions today. Black Ledge has completed 6 of 11 for 50 yards. And a touchdown throw to Kaufman. Long ball. What a gun. Stephon Page, and it's tipped away. Superior defensive play. Lester Hayes, stride for stride, went up high and got a hand on the ball. Saw Lester in the hotel this morning, said, you look slim down. He said, down a ton. 
Down it comes. Played last year at about 215, down this year at about 205. That was the play. And that is absolutely spectacular. Lester a little slow getting up. Mike Haynes is back in the lineup. But Lester may have landed funny on his on his wrist. The player they were going to, Stefan Page, is averaging 22 yards a catch this season. Stefan Page had over 300 yards in receptions in one game against San Diego last year, an NFL record. He's from Fresno State, where he was overshadowed at the collision by his teammate Henry Eller. Jeff Smith, running hard on second down and 10, advances the ball to about the 41-yard line as the game clock ticks down to 140 in running. Stacy Turan, the strong safety for the Raiders, made the stop. It's actually, even though Chiefs have not gained a lot of yards in any single play, a very important drive for them at the end of the half. You don't want the ball back in the hands of the Los Angeles Raiders. You want to neutralize some of that momentum that they got in the last scoring drive. And this is a big reason why Kansas City's been successful. They've converted four of six third downs, most of them to Jeff Smith on the pass. Let's see where they go now. Shotgun with two wide receivers left, one to the right. Movement in the offensive line of the Chiefs. Looked like Attics, the right guard, started the pass block before the snap. If so, it'll make it third and Ball ten. starts. Number 61 on the offense. That's Attics. Hey, they're in a tough position there, Don. They're up. Their hand's not down on the ground. They're trying to watch the ball and also watch the guy across from them and they have to pass protect. And at times you start leaning back to get just a little head start. And once you get 295 pounds leaning one direction, it's generally going to fall that way. Raiders under the gun coming into this game with a one and three record. Three games behind the Denver Broncos in the AFC West. Howie Long said we usually look at the outset of the season as being a Able to lose two games in the road and one at home and still being able to win the division. We lost two at home and one on the road in the first three weeks. Smith. Good block. Yet Smith taking on tacklers. Robinson got him. And it's going to be close to a first down. Now a fight starts up. And after Blackledge, we've got Chiefs and Raiders going full tilt. Just like they like it over the years. quarterbacks is to sprint to the bench when fights start. Certainly keep your helmet on. And you see the pushing and shoving and grabbing and pulling. They are not talking about dinner dates tonight, folks. Now McElroy takes a shot at Blackledge and Blackledge is heading for the bench. Very smart. There's a rule in the NFL that says you'll be ejected immediately if you take a player's helmet off and then hit him with it. That rule was named in favor of Lyle Alexander. Foul, foul, number 75, Los Angeles. Personal foul call goes against the Raiders, so the ball with one, with just 49 seconds to play in the half, is advanced all the way out to the 47-yard line. And that was the punch that's thrown by Howie Long right at the very end of it. Contact all over the place. Normally, when players play, they are in nasty moods out here, and it doesn't take much to set them off. So far, he looks very innocent. Then he sees Townsend. He sees Townsend going against Brad Buddy, and that really starts everything. Has Howie Long been thrown out? First down. We have to get a call on that because he's not in there. He's coming out. And they watched 
Townsend pull Brad Buddy's helmet off. Now if he throws it at the guy and he's thrown out. Now Alzado tried that. Well, they're talking now. Matt Millen's out there. He's one of the captains. I want to know why there's not a first down with a personal foul here. They've got it listed as fourth down. It's a 17 to 7 game. Kansas City is in the lead after leading 17 nothing. And here is the official statement from the NFL on the Raider touchdown. The throw from Mark Wilson to Doki Williams. Replay official Jack Reeder of the NFL ruled the pass incomplete. But there was a failure in communication with the umpire on the field. Therefore it stands as a touchdown. We're going to have a good one the rest of the way. How about it's, uh, it's all right to pull it off though and take a couple yeah, of years right. with it. huh? You can pull the helmet off. That's legal. But if you throw it. That's illegal. Now they're going to get more yards. Now what's this penalty for. Matt Miller went out there and was really jawing with Bob Fredericks. The referee. Let's hear an explanation here. They gained 30 yards on that play. Help us out here. Raiders with four penalties for 68 yards now. Kansas City with four for 20 yards. Let's have a call. We're still missing a call. We got the one flag, which was a personal foul. They marked off 15 yards. Then they just did another 15 yards. The umpires now listen. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is. They're going to go back in the huddle. Why the other 15 yards? Yeah, who's that? Repeat, it was a personal foul on number 75 of Los Angeles, and it is a first down. Yeah, but they got more than 15 yards, didn't they? Sure did. Looked to me like they got two personal foul penalties. Actually, I think uh, Jeff Smith on that was knocked out of bounds there at about the 47 yard line. So that was so they had one penalty. Okay. That, that was the play. The play went from their line of scrimmage prior to the plane. It, it is about 30 yards. 10 yard gain on the play and then a 15 yard penalty. Now Black Ledge with less than 50 seconds to play goes to Jeff Smith again and he takes it down inside the 30 yard line and down to the 29 yard line. Or penalty knocker. That's on McElroy. That's either on McElroy or Barnes, and it continues. That's 39 seconds left to go in the half. They might have thrown McElroy out. McElroy is really lobbying. Now he's staying in. So far. This is the frustration of a one and three start by the Raiders and pretty much a feeling of we're the Kings on this day by the Kansas City Chiefs. I think they've thrown McElroy out. Yeah they have he's out and it looks like Irv Eatman is going to the bench too. I'll tell you one thing for a team of officials this is no day at the beach. Yeah. The only thing I haven't seen here is a hockey puck. We went to we went to the fights and a football game broke out, right? That's exactly right. Thank God for halftime. Looks to me like Eatman may be out. He's standing on the sideline. We had unsportsmanlike conduct on number 26 on Los Angeles and on 75. We had a personal foul on 75. However, number 26 will be removed from the game. There we see again just what happened. Looks like somebody punches McElroy in the back, but then McElroy really throws a punch to, the, to Jeff Smith on the ground. 
I repeat, I thank God for halftime. <laughs> well, it's always a good one when the Raiders and Chiefs tee it up, and today we've gone an extra dimension now as we've had a major fight break out on the field. The Chiefs continue to lead the game 17 to 7, despite the fact that the Raider touchdown, according to the NFL official in the press box, should have been disallowed. So we're going to have an interesting second half. It will not be peaceful. It'll be without Van McElroy, too. Now, he didn't punch him more than once. There was just one punch, and the officials were standing right there. McElroy saying, if you're going to throw me out, throw the other guy out. Trump, do you think this is a, a contrived, actually planned mode of attack for the Raiders? Their team no. is down. They're trying to get things started like a basketball coach getting two technicals and thrown out. Hoping no, it's... I really don't. But historically, this team has always been a team that's played with a chip on its shoulder. And the attitude of a lot of players on the Los Angeles Raiders is it's us against the world. I mean, it basically is in the NFL with Al Davis. And we'll see once again Van McElroy, number 26 there on the bottom. He gets pushed by Mike Pruitt, 43, but then watch that right hand, that right elbow. There's a punch. There's no question about right it. Right in the spotlight. Yeah, no denying whatsoever. And you can see the official standing Sir. right there to throw the flag. That's what the officials are for. No forearms escape our spotlight. A lot of these Raiders are well-balanced players with a chip on each shoulder. But they play this way. They have historically. Remember when Ben Davidson threw Lynn Dawson down here? I mean, this just continues the mystique of the Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Raiders. Well, the Raiders get going like this every week, and right now we're ready to play football again, I think. First down for the Chiefs with 39 seconds to play in the first half. At the 38 yard line of the Raiders. Blackhead stands in all day long. Three ball and it is incomplete at the 20, despite the best efforts of Stefan Adams to come up on the ball. Ball was intended for Paul Coffin. Raiders did an excellent job in coverage there. Right now, Kansas City with 33 seconds left. They need about 15 yards for three points from Nick Lowry and you've got to be very careful here you don't want to turn the ball over because you've got momentum on your side I'd like to be a fly on the wall in the Raider locker room at halftime Mr. Davis may make a visit he's been in with the Raiders coaches here in the first half Raiders misfired early and fell behind 17 to nothing now they trail 17 7 big rush and some excellent pass blocking throwing a strike And uh, offensive tackle looks like Dave Lutz is down now for the Kansas City Chiefs, holding his right knee. Stephon Page, an excellent pattern. I think Mike Hayes was expecting underneath help. It wasn't there. Blackley's rifled that thing out to the sideline. How in the world can you hurt a leg that size? I mean, somebody gets a flying start at it, it'll go. They're taking good care of Blackledge, though, and he makes a perfectly timed throw. You've got to respect Stephon Page's speed. And you see 22 Haynes coming in there late. He certainly does. But an excellent pattern run by Page, a good pass, and a first down for Kansas City. And we'll be back after this. Just going out for the Kansas City Chief, Dave Lutz, a former number two draft choice from Georgia Tech. Regarded as their best pass blocker, injured a right knee on that play, pass blocking for Todd Blackledge. Blackledge made a hit on the near sideline to Stefan Page just inside the Raider 20. And now with 27 seconds to play in the first half, Kansas City has the ball first down and 10. The Chiefs lead the game 17 to 7. It has been a fierce game. A very near bench clearing brawl erupted. Not everybody was in. Here is. Blackledge, and he is down to the 16-yard line. Signaling for a timeout, he gets one with 17 seconds to play. Barnes on the tackle. That's one thing you don't want done in the latter stages of the half or a game. Is a quarterback run the football? Blackledge is hurt now. He took a shot to the head when he went down. Watch this guy come in, and when he goes down. Bang! Martin Saran. Saran with a forearm right to his dome. You see him motioning timeout in the last two minutes of a half or the game, Don. At the two-minute warning, the officials go to the sideline and say, Coach, who can call timeout for you? Normally, you make it your center and your quarterback, and they're the only two people who can call timeout. Yes. 
$2,000. We'll be going to Bob Costas and NFL 86 at halftime, as right now we have 17 seconds to go at the half. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. As the Kansas City Chiefs losing players, Carlos Carson went out early, sprained ankle and sprained right knee. Later, Dave Lutz went down, maybe their best pass blocker. That was moments ago. Blackledge on the sideline getting counsel was wobbly coming off but apparently is all right is going to stay in the game. So out come the Kansas City Chiefs with second down coming up at the 17 yard line of the L.A. Raiders. 17 to 7 Chiefs and 17 seconds on the clock in the first half. Been an excellent drive for the Chiefs started at their own 15 yard line. Consumed almost three minutes. Two fights break out. Biggest yardage gainer, the personal foul penalties against the Raiders. The wide receivers you see set to the top of your screen to the right. Blackledge stands in against a big rush. A lobbing pass is intercepted. Down with the ball is Stefan Adams as he runs it back now across the 20. He's out of bounds at the 26-yard line. So the Chiefs threat is stopped. Howie Long and Blackledge exchange words after the interception. That's the first interception thrown by Blackledge in about his last 70 passes. Long with pressure all over Blackledge. Blackledge was just trying to throw that ball away, Don. But he couldn't follow through. He couldn't get anything on it. And Davis standing there in the end zone to make the interception. And Stephon Adams was making the interception, and Davis is hurt. First time Stephon Adams has ever intercepted a ball for the Raiders. So the ball is now back out to the 27 yard line of Los Angeles with just eight seconds to play and so we'll probably go to halftime barring something unbelievable as final play with the Chiefs in the lead 17 to 7. We'll be looking at the Raider touchdown one more time. Let's look at it right now. This is the touchdown that went on the board but the referee or the official in the box said it should have been disallowed but there was a breakdown in communications. Only one foot was in. You spotted that early Trump. Then we wanted to see if there was contact. Well, that it, doesn't tell too much definitively. But the other replay was perfect, and it showed that there was contact between Lewis and Doki Williams, but the replay official determined that there wasn't enough contact to push him out of bounds. So the seven points the Raiders have on the board, is what we're telling you, should not count. But the score is 17-7. We remind you that this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League, is intended for the private use of our audience, and any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. So the Raiders run out the final play, and they go to the locker room. A wild first half in which we saw the like police protection for Coach Flores. Looks like the Southeast Conference, doesn't it? <laughs> Bob Costas along with Paul McGuire and Ahmad Rashad. Let's get you updated on what's happening around the National Football League. They go to the third at Foxborough. The Patriots pummeling the Dolphins. They call that Miami defense Miami Mice. And is it spilling over onto the offense now? Have they got the jitters too? First possession for Miami. Marino's first pass attempt of the day picked off by Ronnie LaPette. It leads to a field goal by Tony Franklin. A few moments later, Tony Eason hits Willie Scott with a two-yard touchdown pass. It's 10-0 Pats going to the second. They don't let up. Next drive, second quarter, Craig James caps it off, takes a pitch from Tony Eason, goes in from seven yards out. They have a 17-0 lead. The only bad news of the half for New England, Eason suffered bruised ribs, and before halftime, Eason was gone, replaced by Steve Grogan, but not before Eason scrambled away from trouble and hit Irving Fryer between two Dolphin defenders. Fryer with the TD and a nice little dance that brought it to 24-0, and then they got the ball back just before the end of the half, and that was when Eason sustained the injury, the bruised ribs, with the big lead. They're not going to chance it. He won't play again in the second half. He's replaced by Steve Grogan. Franklin added another field goal. Now they go to the third with the 27-0 lead. Paul? I'm watching the game. Marino just threw another interception at the goal line. New England picked the ball off, and they have the ball back. And, and when you have a team that's defense is playing as poorly as the Miami Dolphins' defense, the offense, they must feel that they have to do something more. And when we're watching Marino now, who's so great before, still is a great quarterback, is now forcing. And it's going to cost them dearly. All right, let's take a look at what's happening at Arrowhead, where the Chiefs go to halftime 
with a 17-7 lead over the Raiders. The Raiders come in at 1-3, and, and that wipes the smile off the face of their owner, Al Davis. Although, come to think of it, he is rarely seen beaming, but he's certainly not smiling today because Marcus Allen misses his second consecutive game with an ankle injury. Then turnovers plague the Raiders. Ray Guy can't handle the snap on a punt. It sets up a Nick Lowry field goal. Then Mark Wilson fumbles a snap from center. The Chiefs get the ball back again, still in the first quarter, and Boyce Green takes advantage, going 18 yards around the left side to give them a 10-0 lead. Bad news for the Chiefs in the first half. Wide receiver Carlos Carson out of the game with an ankle injury. However, they built their lead eventually to 17 to nothing on a Todd Blackledge touchdown pass to Paul Kaufman before the Raiders got their lone touchdown of the half, a 12-yard connection from Mark Wilson to Doki Williams. Interesting, because the replay official was set to overrule the call, saying that Williams did not have possession in the end zone. He was going to change it. But again, they were unable to communicate from upstairs down onto the field. Why they can't just have a simple system with flags, a red flag hanging out, say, wait a minute, we're reviewing this, don't go on, who knows? But it is fair to say that the replay system thus far has been an unmitigated failure in the NFL. Week after week, it's botched up in some way or another. But very little botched up by the Chiefs today with the 17-7 lead. You know, no matter how badly the Raiders play, if you can beat the Raiders because of their reputation, it really gives your team an emotional boost. And Kansas City is playing very confident. I've always thought that the Raiders were going to get in trouble sooner or later because for the last three or four years, as long as they've had Marcus Allen, they've relied on Marcus to be their best runner, their best receiver, and their best blocker. All of a sudden, Marcus is hurt, and they're paying the price. They can't do anything right. But Kansas City, on the other hand, you talk about Seattle and undefeated Denver, Kansas City keeps playing like they're playing. They're going to have something to say before the season's over. All right, one other item of interest in that first half, Van McElroy, defensive back for the Raiders, ejected after a fight with offensive lineman Irv Eatman of the Chiefs. Eatman was allowed to remain in the game. The Bears at halftime at Soldier Field with the lead on the Vikings. They've gone to the third now. 10-0 is the score. Vikings had a goal line stand right at the end of the second quarter to keep it reasonably close. The Giants lead the Cardinals. The score there, 6-3. They've gone to the half in St. Louis. Washington leading New Orleans in the third quarter, 14-6. Morton Anderson just missed a 51-yard field goal for the Saints after kicking two in a row earlier. It snaps a string of 20 in a row made by Morton Anderson. Philadelphia at Atlanta. Leading 10-0 at halftime, Falcons are 4-0. They lost Gerald Riggs in the first half. He's got a possible concussion. Cleveland and Pittsburgh, 17-14 Browns, third quarter. A look at some highlights. Art Modell, the Browns owner, doesn't know what to expect. After all, his team has never won at Three Rivers. They are 0-16 against the Steelers there. But they grab a 7-0 lead in the first when Bernie Kosar shows some mobility, which is not exactly his strong point, hits Webster Slaughter for a touchdown. And that brings Mr. Modell to his feet for some applause. Now, with the Steelers leading 14-10 in the second quarter, they kick off in the ice cube. Gerald McNeil takes it at the goal line and doesn't stop until he's covered 100. 100 yards for the score that gives Cleveland their present lead at 17-14. If you were with us on the pregame show, Ahmad Rashad's feature was about the little man in pro football. He talked with Lionel James. He talked about Gerald McNeil, who a week ago ran a punt back better than 80 yards for a score against the Lions. The encore this week, a 100-yard kickoff return for a TD at Pittsburgh. Cincinnati and Green Bay. Packers will be 0-5 after this one in all likelihood. Playing at home, they're trailing 27-7. And they go to the third quarter at the Silver Dome, and Detroit has the lead over the Oilers. Both those teams, 1-3, 21-13 in favor of the Lions. NFL 86 halftime activity. Bill Henry runs it back to about the 19-yard line.